Son Gohan, a character that has been the focal point of many of the most iconic moments in all of Dragon Ball. An enraged chosen one that once led the charge of the next generation in the series. Sparks that hinted towards his potential in the beginning became explosions of passion in defense of his fallen friends. And while he has one of the most well-documented falls from grace in the minds of many fans, as of late we have noticed signs that indicate that very spark may have returned. So, how strong is Son Gohan? Well, <sighs> let's have a look. I'm Totally Not Mark, and this is the Power Level Series. Episode 5, Son Gohan. Hey! You said Boo's episode today! Boo wanted now! Christ, not again. Uh, <laughs> look, I have your episode written, it's, it's done. But just like the androids, you had no official sources giving you any numerical value. I do have your level, but in order to make sense of it, I need Goku's full power level in Super Saiyan 3 at the end of Dragon Ball Z. So I decided instead of spoiling a major part of this series, I would hold off and include you when we have that figure revealed at the right time. <laughs> you make Boo angry! Okay, dude, whoa. Uh, look, I have pudding here. Does that help? <laughs> Boo like pudding? Oh, Mr. Satan! Look what Boo found! I literally can't believe that worked. <clears throat> anyway. Son Gohan is a half-human type earthling, half Saiyan hybrid. He is 24 years old when you take into account the roughly one year he spent in the time chamber. His techniques and transformations include the Kamehameha, the Masenko Blast, Super Saiyan transformation, and his ultimate form. There are nine officially stated power levels for Gohan. Those being 710, 1307, 1, 981, 2800, 1500, over 10,000, 14,000, and finally 200,000. And so, with that, it's time for some good old-fashioned mental gymnastics. This story begins right after the transition Toriyama made from Dragon Ball to what is now widely known as Dragon Ball Z. Cradled in his father's arms, timid, quiet and shy, we get our first glimpse at five-year-old Son Gohan who, if you don't know, was named after Goku's late grandpa Gohan. However, all is not well as Raditz snatches Gohan from Goku's arms. At this point, Gohan's resting power level is 1, and while during that brief period he displayed readings as low as 1, when his loved ones were in danger, his power skyrocketed to as high as 1307. For us viewers and readers, this was our first introduction to a huge part of Gohan's character, his rage boosts. Sudden and oftentimes enormous power increases surged through Gohan when in severe distress. He would lose control of his senses and cut loose. However, once calmed down, this huge power increase would vanish as suddenly as it appeared. From the Raditz saga to the Saiyan invasion, Piccolo takes Gohan into the wilderness to train him. The goal of this was to remove the enormous amount of self-doubt in Gohan's head as well by instilling him with a sense of independence and fighting ability. He catches on really quickly and in doing so, once he lands on the battlefield to confront the invading Saiyans, has boosted his power level to 981. Which when you take into account the fact Goku's power level was 10 when he was twice Gohan's age, it's incredible to say the least. However, at this point it's impossible to measure his true potential and ability accurately largely due to his power readings thus far having been muddied by either rage or fear. The clearest reading at this point has been 981, and even there arguments can be made that this isn't an accurate representation of what he is capable of either, saying that while there is an enormous improvement compared to his altercation with Raditz, he is by no means confident when his power level reading was taken. It's also worth noting that Vegeta doesn't regard these as accurate readings stating Earthlings have the ability to alter their battle power, which has been proven to be true. Something interesting I noticed during the conflict with Nappa was Gohan's development subtly becoming more and more confident. Three instances chronicle his development in this department. The first being when both Piccolo and Krillin set up Gohan to blast Nappa. Gohan however succumbed to his fear and ran off. The second when Piccolo grabbed a hold of Nappa's tail, once again setting Gohan up for the attack. The trouble this time was not on Gohan but misinformation on Piccolo's part. Gohan quickly reverted back to being scared thereafter. The, the final and probably most memorable comes after Piccolo sacrifices himself in defense of Gohan. With that incentive, Gohan for the first time takes the initiative on the attack. The effort was to no effect, but the difference this time was that afterwards, he didn't appear as the same scared child. This particular Masenko Blast reached as high as 2,800 in power. 
This newly found confidence is most prevalent when Gohan tries to defend his father from Vegeta, who at this point in the story, let's face it, would scare pretty much anybody. With that over with, it's important to note that once the events of the Saiyan Saga are over, and Gohan is about to head to Namek accompanied by Krillin and Bulma, Gohan has undergone two Zenkai boosts. The first being when he is rescued by Goku from Nappa, the second obviously once he recovers from the injuries after the Saiyan Saga, resulting in a power level of at least 1500 once he touches down on planet Namek. At this point, the only two markers of strength improvement come from his rage boost that he's had in the series thus far, those being against Raditz and the Mesenko directed at Nappa. These, however, are too different to compare. The first was a burst of pure emotion, the other was more focused and calculated. Both angry, yes, but to varying degrees. A conversation between Nappa and Vegeta sheds some light on this quirk Gohan seems to have. Simply put, Gohan is an extraordinary case due to his mix of Saiyan and human biology. The human side provides the emotional spark necessary for the Saiyan blood to boost his power. Translation. I've got no fucking reference! <clears throat> And as if Gohan's power at this point wasn't difficult enough to pin down, once on planet Namek, he meets with Guru who unlocks his sleeping power. We've established in my previous video detailing Krillin's power through the series that Guru's sleeping power unlock works on a slow release. Thus, by the time Gohan faces Guldo, his power has risen to over 10,000 and 14,000 by the time he confronts Raccoon. During his battle with the Ginyu Force, once again, Gohan gains a Zenkai boost after Goku arrives with the Sensu Beans. We can then fast forward to our last official reading of Gohan's power as we see him face to face with the evil tyrant Frieza, standing at a power level of 200,000. With all that said, these official readings have given me... NOTHING... to work with in terms of what he is capable of while training. Despite having tons of official reference dotted throughout the series so far, but alas, let's put our best foot forward, shall we? and try to find something here. Alrighty, so if we take a look at this quote, we learn that Frieza is surprised by Gohan's feat of strength he just displayed. It's worth knowing that second form Frieza is over 1 million in power level, and although this does very little in the way of damaging Frieza, he must have been way over 200,000 when launching this attack. As we know, Gohan's power level skyrockets when he loses his reason, and things are starting to move, so let's take Gohan's last rage moment and use it to develop a percentage boost when angry. Fighting Nappa, Gohan was 981, but boosted to 2,800 when mad. That's an almost three times increase. So looking at the level of attack Gohan launched, I think multiplying his current power level of 200,000 by 4 is fitting, giving us a power level of 800,000. But again, like before, I would imagine quickly reverts back to normal once he is calmed. The attack was enough to put a couple of scratches on Frieza, but not nearly enough to damage his second form, which clocks over 1 million. Looking at this quote, it's very important to note that Vegeta was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with first form Frieza, who has an official power level reading of 530,000, meaning his power level at this point in the series must be in the region of 530,000 also, thus giving credence to the idea that in that instance, Vegeta was weaker than what Gohan outputted by a substantial margin. Padding out my argument nicely. Frieza continues to lay into Gohan until he is at death's door. However, Krillin arrives in the nick of time and distracts Frieza just long enough for Gohan to be healed by Dende, giving him yet another Zenkai boost. Alright, so this bit is important. This is where I try to discern a power-up for Gohan Zenkai based off of contextual evidence in the series thus far. There's tons to consider, from Vegeta being scared at this time, to Gohan being supremely confident, and of course, who can forget the walking sensu being that is Dende. This is gonna be kind of fun to try and explain. Alrighty, so what do we have for certain? We have this quote from Vegeta, and the first thing we should observe from this is that this boost is referred to as something you'd expect of someone with Saiyan blood. So Vegeta seems to view this increase as typical for a Saiyan. But what does that mean? What is a typical boost for a Saiyan that's recovered from near death? Well, let's have a look. For reference, we will use what Vegeta's experience with Zenkai boosts that are confirmed by official sources. After his fight with Goku on Earth, he went from 18,000 to 24,000, which is a 33% increase. After his fight with Zarbon on Namek, he went from 24,000 to 30,000, a 25% increase. Therefore, from Vegeta's experience, we can discern that the average growth for a Zenkai boost is somewhere in the region of 25 to 33%. However, and this is important, in this passage, Vegeta describes the increase as steady, whereas when describing Gohan's power-up, he uses the word greatly. So Gohan getting more than the average Zenkai boost here could be justified. So that's something to keep in mind when we move forward with this mini-investigation. There are instances where Vegeta's power goes up astronomically, where even he himself states that it wasn't a run-of-the-mill increase. 
That said, he does mention that this boost could be connected to the fact that they are nearing Super Saiyan level. And really, there is some evidence to support that. I mean, we have official sources that back up the fact that Saiyans increase in strength dramatically around this level. I mean, look at Goku. He also got a similarly massive boost once he got out of the tank, going from 90,000 to 3 million from a single Zenkai. Vegeta during this stage of the saga was particularly terrified of Frieza, even contemplating fleeing from the battle altogether. However, once Vegeta noticed the increase Gohan received once he had been healed by Dende, he seemed much more at ease, stating that luck could be turning our way just a little bit. Keeping in mind that narratively speaking, Gohan is now stronger than Vegeta but weaker than second form Frieza, with no other points to plot a more exact power level, let's put Gohan right in the middle between Vegeta's 530,000 and Frieza's over 1 million, with a power level of 750,000. He arrives back at Earth with a power level of roughly 750,000 or perhaps more depending on whether or not Gohan's power continues to creep upwards. This quote from Frieza lends some credence to that idea actually. It's important to notice here that Gohan doesn't go back to help Goku with final form Frieza like he did in the anime. And Vegeta also doesn't beat up Gohan when they get back to Earth. These meetings were exclusive to the anime and since they were not part of the manga, are not factors to consider in future calculations. By the time Trunks arrives, Gohan hasn't trained in over a year. Therefore, it's fair to assume that his power has stayed the same if not dropped the tiniest fraction. I will keep him at the 750,000 mark due to the drop being insignificant, he is still not fully grown and his power could have continued to rise a little after he returned to Earth. In preparation for the androids invasion, Gohan goes off to train for three years with both Piccolo and Goku. And once again I have no means of calculating how fast Gohan will gain in strength over those three years. Anybody seeing a theme here? From this quote we learn that Piccolo is stronger, but given his power at this time to be well into the hundreds of millions, as we've already previously established in my last video, it doesn't exactly help much. It just tells us that Gohan's power lies somewhere in the region of 750,000 to over 100 million, which doesn't help at all. Goku at this point is insanely strong comparatively to Gohan. However, that only becomes the case once he utilizes the 50 times power multiplier that Super Saiyan brings. Against Frieza he was 3 million, but once he turned into Super Saiyan, his power shot up. So for Gohan his power would need to be in the region of about 1 to 5 million. However, because I have no way of deriving a figure here, I will put his power again right in the middle at 2.5 million. He trained for three years with the two strongest beings in the universe, Goku and Piccolo, prior to the chamber and his body is approaching adolescence. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility when you consider some of the feats previous characters in the series have had. One observation I would like to point out also is that Goku was 3 million when he first attained the Super Saiyan transformation. It's never been stated in the series specifically, however if anger is the trigger that unleashes the form, perhaps it's fair to assume that there is some strength threshold one must pass for it to work. I'm not just trying to blow smoke here either. Strange things happen when a Saiyan is approaching this level of strength. It's observed by Frieza who verbalizes this numerous times. Vegeta notices this regarding both himself and Gohan, and objectively it's observed once Goku gets out of the tank. This would also provide reasoning as to why Goku didn't change into a Super Saiyan when Krillin died back in Dragon Ball. I mean, he was insanely angry back then also. Now, there's the obvious counter-argument that Akira Toriyama simply didn't plan for there to be a Super Saiyan until much, much later. And this is true. However, the various statements by Frieza and Vegeta regarding all of the active Saiyans leads me to think that Akira Toriyama subtly wanted to convey this during this arc. Because if not, why were those statements even there in the first place? So when considering this, it adds factors as to why Goku believes Gohan is fully capable of attaining the Super Saiyan transformation when he asks him to train in the time chamber alongside him. Goku knows that Gohan has untapped latent potential, yes, but more importantly he knows that Gohan is approaching the level he was at when he transformed. So with absolutely nothing concrete to go on, this figure I managed to find I hope satisfies at least some of you out there. Once Gohan and Goku enter the chamber, Gohan with a power level of 2.5 million grows achieving the Super Saiyan transformation through harness the correct mental state. Goku notes that this happens really fast. Again, this adds further evidence to the idea that 3 million could be the minimum requirement for transforming into a Super Saiyan. In a couple of short months with Goku, he raises his power level significantly and transforms. Let's say he raises his base level to 3.5 million, emitting a power of 175 million while in the Super Saiyan state. Some more time passes and once Gohan has mastered the form enough to comfortably train in it, Goku remarks at how fast Gohan is improving, stating that he might become, quote, really incredible. I think it's worth explaining at this time that there is more to the Super Saiyan transformation than simply Super Saiyan 1, 2, and 3. There are in fact grades between 1 and 2, 4 to be exact. 
Super Saiyan Grade 1 we all are very familiar with. This is the form Goku attained when fighting Frieza for the first time on Namek. Super Saiyan Grade 2 we have seen with Vegeta when fighting second form Cell. There is a marked increase in strength. Note that this is not a new transformation. This is a refinement of the current Super Saiyan form, using it more efficiently. Super Saiyan Grade 3 we have seen by both Trunks and briefly in the time chamber with Goku. This form further increases the power output of the Grade 2 form with a significant drop in speed. Super Saiyan Grade 4 or full power Super Saiyan is complete mastery of the form. Most importantly, the users are capable of maintaining this state with virtually no loss in stamina. All that said, once Goku and Gohan emerge from the chamber, they both have full mastery of the Super Saiyan form, attaining Super Saiyan Grade 4. Once out, Goku and Gohan stop off at Korin's to get a quick read on whether or not Goku can beat Cell. He boosts himself to half power, leaving Gohan stumped. But the rest of the guys in the lookout are in awe. Even Vegeta. I think this line is indicative of Gohan in that moment being capable of boosting his power level higher than Goku. Gohan at this point must have a power level in the region of 1 billion, when going all out perhaps even a little less. But Gohan's character never does anything by halves, so I've highballed this one. Now some of you might be wondering how I derived this estimate. Well I tried to get it based on a few factors. From previous videos we have discerned that Piccolo and Android 17 have power levels of around 360 million at this time. Fighting first form Cell, Piccolo stood no chance when he confronted him the second Time. Now, remember, I have very little to go off of in terms of concrete official reference, so bear with me here. Android 16 was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Imperfect Cell, stating that according to his calculations, his power is equal to Cell's, meaning he was substantially stronger than 17, 18, and even Piccolo at this time. So for the sake of moving forward, let's put him at 400 million. I assume this level based on the fact that 17 was able to evade and struggle against Cell's efforts initially. It's not the same as when someone is twice as strong as their opponent, so 40 million above seems kind of accurate. He was dominating 17, but 17 was able to evade for a short amount of time too. This would mean that Cell would have a power level in the region of 400 million also. Once he absorbs Android 17, Imperfect Cell would absorb his power to his biomass. His absorptions seem to work on some sort of addition scale, thus explaining why he would be wiping out town after town adding power to his own. Here's a fun thought. If the figures I am stating are true, that would mean if the average human power level was 5, taking into account children with lower levels as well as others with higher levels, Cell would have had to absorb around 80 million humans to get to 400 million. That's some Santa Claus levels of travel to find people right there. So, going off what I just said there, that Imperfect Cell was around 400 million, and we have deducted that Cell's absorption is different to Piccolo's merging, and simply adds the victim's power to his own, we can discern that Semi-Perfect Cell, if what I found above is true, must have a power level in the region of 760. Million. So efforts from Piccolo and 16 do absolutely nothing to him. This is more of an indication of someone being twice your strength. Scenes like this don't happen unless someone is a substantial amount of strength over you. Heck, with one generic blast, he blows off half of 16's face. Once he eventually absorbs Android 18, his power surpasses the 1 billion mark, reaching 1 billion 90 million, capable of pushing it higher when going all out. But let's round it to 1.1 billion for simplicity's sake in the video. So therefore, given that Gohan at this point is the strongest Z fighter, but Gohan is still weaker than Cell currently. Gohan doesn't have much in the way of training before the Cell games and doesn't re-enter the time chamber again. Once Goku forfeits and asks Gohan to step in, Gohan believes Goku wasn't going all out and again is surprised after finding out that was the extent of his father's strength. Once we apply the Super Saiyan 2 multiplier of times 2, that power level becomes 2 billion at least. At this level, Gohan is almost twice as strong as Cell, whom I estimate to be somewhere in the region of 1.1 billion earlier. I don't think anyone who is watching this doesn't already know the general theme of this fight. Cell gets victimized and embarrassed at the hands of a Gohan that has just exploded with anger. After this fight, seven years pass with Gohan either training sparingly or not at all. Now that we're well into the Buu Saga, we find this quote. And while this isn't a lot of information, we now know for certain that Gohan has regressed somewhat in his normal state. To say he was fighting far, far better, let's say he's currently fighting with a Super Saiyan 2 form output of 1.5 billion, give or take, making his base form 15 million, meaning since the days of the Cell games, Gohan has lost at least 3 million off of his base power level. With this current battle power, Gohan is weaker than both Goku and Vegeta once again. Gohan kicks Majin Buu once before being blasted into the middle of the forest where he remains knocked out until he is picked up and transported to the world of the Kais to have his power unlocked by the Elder Kai who was trapped in the sword. At this point, it is unclear whether or not Gohan receives a Zenkai boost from being healed by Kibito. It's mentioned in Super that after a point, they don't apply anymore. However, that point is a gray area to say the least. The Elder Kai unlocks Gohan's abilities and Goku is simply blown away. 
The Elder Kai goes on to say that he no longer needs to go into his Super Saiyan form, that it's the, quote, wrong way. Fast forward a whole bunch and we find ourselves with Gohan versus Super Buu, who has a power level of roughly 8.8 .8 billion. Once Gohan unlocks his ultimate form, he attains a power level I've measured to be in the region of 13.5 billion. Now this figure, believe it or not, has rhyme and reason behind its madness. However, like Majin Buu, I need Goku as a Super Saiyan 3 to derive this figure. And as I've stated before, I don't want to ruin a perfectly good video if I can. So I apologize if this isn't satisfying for you as I usually show my process. That said, once I cover Goku, I'll reference this area of Gohan in detail chronicling exactly how I derive this figure. It just so happens that Goku is a vital part of scaling most of the characters in the series. However, with all that said, this is the absolute strongest he has ever been, including Super's run to date. For the vast bulk of Dragon Ball Super, Gohan plays a secondary character, living out his life the way he has always wanted, in peace, furthering his studies and raising his family. He fails to train up until after the resurrection of F Arc, where he doubts that he can even turn Super Saiyan, which I honestly had no idea how to measure in any discernible way. Over the next couple of arcs, Gohan is more active and is even seen training with Piccolo. In the new opening to the show, the main piece of info that's worth taking into account is that Gohan is now seen regaining his ultimate form. Whether or not this is definitely going to be the case is still to be seen. Another telling fight occurred while Gohan was fighting Lavender in the exhibition match for the two Zenos. There Gohan went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the second strongest fighter in their universe. There are many factors to consider that made this match close, the most poignant of which being the Poison Lavender implemented. With that taken into account, it's fair to state that Gohan is significantly stronger than Lavender. Again, looking at the current opening for the show, we clearly see Gohan unlock some form of clear aura. This at least to me points in the ultimate form being reached once again by Gohan, which is honestly great to see. The ultimate form I will treat as a steady level of 13.5 billion, but if you think he is less than that at this point, then that's your prerogative. I know this was a long video guys, but there was honestly so many factors I had to take into account when writing this. Gohan has officially stated power levels, but the only instance he trained during the first 100 episodes was during the span of time between Raditz and Vegeta, and there was virtually no means to derive a training multiplier based off that information. With that said, I tried to find as many reasons to justify the increases while trying to stay in line with the narrative of the show. All that said, thank you for sitting through for what is now the length of a short movie. If you enjoyed this video, it would help a lot if you left a like, and if you would like to see the continuation of this series, don't forget to subscribe. This has been the Power Level Series. I've been Totally Not Mark, and as always, thank you so much for watching.